All right. Hey guys, it's Eric with Medicare Supplement University, and I'm really excited about today's podcast because I have a couple of awesome guests with us. Uh, the first guest that I want to introduce is Cheryl Pritchard. She is the Director of Operations for Individual Assurance Company, or IAC as a lot of us know it. And also on the podcast, we have Tegre Moot, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for Heartland Financial Group. Now, the relationship between these two guys is pretty awesome. Back in 2014, um, Heartland Financial Group was in charge of the distribution for the Medicare supplement with Individual Assurance Company. And really, there's a cool story behind it in terms of just how Tegre got his, his actual start with IAC and at the same time, the Heartland Financial Group. So uh, Tegre, just wanted to, to welcome you again and uh, you know, give them a little bit of backstory about this cool little, I guess, uh, serendipitous relationship you have here. I like that word, serendipitous. <laughs> Actually, a really cool story. Um, as uh, a lot of people know, you and I started working together back in the 2000 something. At Six, I think. Years. What was it? About 10 years, right? Yeah, 2006. Yeah. Um, so I remember early 2014, I remember hearing rumors that a company was coming out in the MetSup world. And it wasn't kind of what it is today where you have 900 carriers coming in, um, you know, at the same time. It was a little bit, even in 2014, it was less frequent for carriers to come in. So when you heard that news, it was <laughs> to come in. And so I remember early 2014, I kept hearing this name, ICA, IAC. And I just couldn't get to the bottom of it, but I found out who had the deal and it was Heartland. And so I called Heartland because I wanted to be the first person out West to carry the contract. And so, you know, the game that we used to play, Eric, was we hear a new company coming out. Then we all ask and we beg for the rates because we want to know that what we're selling right now, we want to see if they're better than what we're selling right now. And plus, that means it's the, the gateway to new opportunity, new relationship. We go after new agents and introduce a new product. And that was always, you know, the exciting parts of our business. Well, and and the, the, the position that we were in, it was always because the marketer's dream is to be able to actually be in charge of the distribution. But if not, then the next best thing that we could do is try to be the first out there on the market with the product. And that's what we were gunning for. Exactly. So, I mean, we, we used to, I mean, I remember taking trips to the Department of Insurance to see if we could, you know, get a filing so that we could take a peek at the rates. And we used to actually walk in there and then sit with someone at the DOI and they'd bring a big file to us. And we used to thumb through that and be like, oh, we found the rates. So we were, you know, kind of got a sneak peek at how the, the rates were filed um, and if they were going to be competitive or not. And so you know, that was a position we were in in 2014. And I remember I, I called into Heartland. I, I spoke to Chris and he said, why don't you come up to the office and let's talk about it. And so I flew in there. remember I was sitting in the boardroom and we're talking about IAC. I'm being shown maps of where they're going to go and everything. And all I can think of in the back of my mind is where are those rates? <laughs> <laughs> And, and of course, like any true good FMO marketer, um, they were hidden in a file cabinet somewhere back there. And once you get contracted, maybe two weeks before we launch, we're going to let you see those rates. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't, I'm in the boardroom right now. I can see those rates. But anyway, when I walked out of that boardroom, I, I kind of looked around. I was like, man, I think I'm, I think I'm being hired. And so um, <laughs> kind of my, that was kind of my introduction to IAC. It led to a different path for my career personally. Um, and it put me in a different position where now we could, I could be a part of, you know, the, the actual rate filings and the product development side of things and um, how we roll things out and, and be a part of that conversation, which is something that I'd always aspired to in my, in my own career. And so, um, and then, you know, another funny story on top of that is driving from Arizona to Kansas City for the first time so I could bring my car. I remember getting lost on a toll road. I wanted to avoid the toll road. And, and get lost and I pulled off on a side street and I saw a university on the left and I look up and I see this big marquee and it says IAC on it and I just about crashed because I was so excited that I was like that's the company I'm going to be marketing for <laughs> and it was cool I pulled over it was a Sunday afternoon and I found your home office Cheryl by by accident but you know one of the things that, that I, we've gone through with IAC now having a very large block of business, probably close to 100 million premium. 
Um, you've been released, you know, 40 plus states. There's very few states that we're not in. Um, the usual suspects, Northeast and, you know, a few outliers that we haven't placed the product in, but we've been in many states. Um, you know, after four years, your rates start to kind of creep up. The, you know, the, the competitive edge that you have kind of dwindles down a little bit. But in, in some instances, you can refile, just depends on a few things, um, number of lives in the state. There's different things that actuaries look at that allow you to reprice your rates. And what's awesome for us right now is that during AEP and going into 2019, we have new, fresh opportunity with IAC. And that's an exciting thing. Um, you know, last October 1st, our, our worlds were, um, you know, very chaotic in, in the home office move from Equitable to Edmond, Oklahoma, where we had a huge transition just before the AEP deadline. And, you know, we, we spent the last year working with the team at IAC, um, you know, with, with everything, the good, the bad, getting things in order so that we could um, – well, actually, at the end of the day, provide top-level quality service to agents. And in our market, where we're so competitive right now, um, so many market entrances, what really matters to an agent, because price is so compacted right now, everybody is kind of a 2 $3 from each other, what really matters is customer service. What really matters is how well we take care of the consumer, the, you know, most importantly, how well do we take care of their claims? How well do we just do little things like answer the phone when they call in and not make it hold for an hour? And so one of the things that I've benefited from is with people like Cheryl and her team at the home office that actually truly really care about the consumer, the agent, and everybody that's involved in the equation. Um, and so that's, a, a, to us, that's a factor that is at play right now in our industry is, is the customer service aspect of things. Because we all know that we have opportunity on rates, but who can handle the business the best, take care of the client the best, take care of the agent the best. And I feel 100% confident with the team at IAC that we're in a good spot for agents. And here's the thing, we all know that we're not perfect. Cheryl, you know it, I know it. Yes. We're not, but, but what we're good at is identifying problems and caring enough that when we identify problems, we go and we take care of it. Mm -hmm. um, so Cheryl and I were taking care of an issue this morning before this call. Uh, we were trying to figure out how we could best serve our agent force. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of, you know, what can serve as a good introduction to IEC, fantastic company. Um, I don't want to steal any of Cheryl's thunder as we go <laughs> forward, but you know, I think there's things that agents want to know going into AEP about IAC. And I also think it's really good for agents to meet the home office staff. Who's, who's processing your business? Is it some, you know, somebody you never know or met, you just fax it in and hopefully somebody on the other line takes care of it? Well, that's why I think these, these podcasts are important for us to do. Let's talk to the company. Let's talk to the people processing the business. And most importantly, let's talk to the people that run the show, like Cheryl. Oh. So, Amen. Amen. <laughs> so that is a very strong introduction. And so Cheryl's going to have to follow up with some, some great uh, value here, you know, because Tedra, man, he set it up. All right. So just, just messing around. No, this is all good, all good fun. So Cheryl, uh, yeah, just give us a little bit of, uh, I guess, information about your background and, and specifically okay. working with ages. Like what, what, it, what's it been here? Well, I've been in the insurance industry my entire career. I've managed underwriters, new business, agent services, marketing personnel. I've dedicated my career in working for agents. Um, I was actually doing financial planning for seniors when I was approached by IEC to come to work for them handling Medigap offerings. And part of the attraction was IAC's marketing group, HFG. I, I had heard of them, I and I and I found that to be to, to pull me toward working here. So um, I've educated myself on in in insurance, and I love it. I love it. I love the clients. I love the agents, and I love my employees too. They're the reason why I look good. Honestly, it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's awesome. And, and so I guess what, why, I guess with, with the agents that are going to be watching this, because uh, you know, there could be a lot of agents out there that, that are just kind of, they're used to just pushing names like Aetna, Mutual of Omaha, you know, the, the big name that, that you, that you normally would have a household name, I guess. So why should they consider uh, selling IAC during AEP? Well, a lot of acronyms. Some of this- Yeah, some of the same reasons you should consider IAC year-round. Actually, we have an experienced professional staff of underwriters who have a service attitude. I mean, our underwriters are dedicated to get applications out the door and get our agents paid. They understand the agent doesn't get paid until they make a decision. And we also implement technology to help agents. And, for example, our new phone calculator, you put in some – information about your client and you can get a quote for each app and we actually plan to roll that out next week right before AEP. Right on, right on. So, and and technology is such a big integral part nowadays of what we do in this business. I think the first thing that really, um, I would say really changed the landscape of what we do is when, when the the different companies that came out with quoting tools started to roll out because up until then, you know, it was very manual that we would have to go to the outlines of coverage and look up the zip codes and based on the three digit zip, look up the rate for the age. It was, it, it was quite cumbersome if you're trying to compare several companies at once. And then with the rollout of the quoting tools, everything changed. And so uh, from there, e-apps really started to make a, become more prominent with different insurance carriers. And, and again, that's just thanks to technology. So tell us a little bit about your e-app because, um, you know, it, if I understand correctly, the e-app is the preferred method of submitting applications, is it not? It is. And what the web application or the e-app, I call it web app, the e-app, the application process is easy. The digital signature is simple. And once the application is submitted, it transmits to IAC within minutes. Shortly following, we have an underwriter looking at that application. Wow. And I, let, me, let me tell you a little bit about the process because I think that makes a little more sense. So the state code is added to the link, to the end of the link, and this is what launches the correct application. The link is the same from state to state. It's that state code that makes it different. And as you complete the application, as you're going through it, if a field is missing, the e-app will direct you back to the missing information. At the end of the application, you submit, it transmits, and our underwriters are making decisions the same day it's received. It's a very streamlined process. So even with e-apps, your decisions are being made the same day because I think one of the draws to the Tele app was that they would get the decision the same day, but we can also, this can be accomplished. It may not be instant, but it will be same day that we can accomplish getting an answer on, on whether the client's approved or not. Yes, that's our goal. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. That's, and that's, again, a huge benefit too with the e-app is that, um, you know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, or better, better yet, I'm going to ask you a question how is it with your e-app, especially with the new e-app rollout, how do we collect the signatures with the e-app? That's what I'm saying, that the digital signature is very simple. So basically, at the very beginning of the application, you're giving us a Medicare ID. At the end, you're, be- you're typing in the applicant's name, the producer's name, and it's populating that Medicare ID, and we call that our confirmation. That's it. It's not That's any it. more complicated than that. That's it. So really, really, it is the the Medicare number that is the signature. That's what you're saying. Yeah, that's what's driving those simple signatures. That's correct. So what happens in the case where, you know, because there's a lot of people out there who are writing turning 65 business that's going to be, they're writing it six months, five months, four months out before they get their Medicare ID. What do we do in those situations? Unfortunately, we're having to hold those applications till we get the ID simply because what the minute you issue a, a application or a policy into a system, it creates a crossover file to Medicare, and that's what links your policyholder and the fact they have insurance with you to Medicare. And so you have to have that Medicare ID. It's so important. It drives so, everything. So then, understanding correctly, if I if I write somebody five months out with IAC. 
Um, well, first of all, will your e-app even let me submit it because I can't put in an ID. Like if I just put in their social with an A at the end. Um, it will take that. It will take that. But then at that yes. point, you guys know to hold it because you know that, you know, at that point, I'm just, I'm writing a T65. I don't have the ID yet. So you're okay with that. You just, you, but us as agents have to know you're going to hold it until that actual ID comes through, which is also means that premium won't be drafted, right? Until that happens because that's correct. app that's isn't being correct. processed. So the, premium the won't be drafted. We get it, we'll get it. We'll get that ID in and it will automatically populate issues. All the get all of those things. Okay. Oh, Eric, real quick. So that's an important point as well, because this was a, you know, kind of a interesting year for the Medicare ID numbers um, in that, you know, you have so many people in the Medicare system and now they're having to do deal with a new number, correct? They are. So um, was that a, an easy process or a hard process for you guys to implement? Meaning you get a paper application that has their old Medicare ID on it. Um, that's going to create some sort of, of work. Uh, it's going to hold the process up if you don't get that correct ID on it right now. So I imagine uh, your communication with the agents uh, when it first started happening picked up a little bit. Um, and, and so, you know, in terms of, it seemed seamless to me. It didn't seem like I had that many problems uh, pop up in the field with that Medicare, um, you know, switch over on the, on the IDs. So, um, well, well, Medicare has provided us with information showing us what that what the number is going to look like. There's certain letters and numbers that are not included, and also when they were rolling out the new numbers to each state. But our agents have been amazing. They have been getting us the new number very quickly. So we it hasn't even been a big enough issue for me to for you and I to talk about Ted Gray. So it's yeah. it's just. It's, it's, it's been, you know, I think we're emailing, we're calling, it's, it's been seamless. That's, that's yeah. definitely, again, something agents need to hear is that, I mean, I think there's two things. Agents need to understand that the process, you know, when you're submitting, if you're writing someone six months out with, with IAC, you do need to, I guess, make the client aware that, um, that the application will actually be processed and issued, um, you know, with the appropriate effective date, but it will happen when that Medicare ID is issued. Right. right. And we're also guaranteeing the rate too, Eric. I think that's important for them to remember. Whatever rate we offer the day they sign that app, that's what they're going to get. And it's a 12 month rate guarantee. Am I right? That's correct. Okay. Solid. That's and so, um, so then going, switching, kind of switching gears a little bit from, from the open enrollment, but to, to AEP, um, a big thing that agents are always wanting to know is that, you know, with most carriers, you can only write business 60 days out. So are we going to be allowed to write as soon as AEP starts? Are we going to be able to write January 1st effective dates with IAC? Yes, we will allow a January 1st effective date for AEP. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Love to hear that. And that, yeah, because that is, a, it's, again, it's a big deal. It kind of it gives IAC an edge because there's not a ton of carriers out there that are actually doing that yet. So it, it's good to be one of them that will. It'll help to, again, be a, for the agent's minds, you know, a, a go-to product during AEP. Plus, I think that once agents actually start writing and seeing the process, how smooth it is with IAC, because I've had nothing but good experiences with them, and we write a, a good amount through our call centers, to, you know, to with IAC. So I just, I think that the more the agents get to use your product and write it and see how smooth it is, that it's just, you know, they're going to want to do more of it. Um, so what hours then during AEP is IAC going to be open? Actually, we're going to be open. Our operating hours are going to be 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And when our app count explodes during AEP, we're all willing to work whatever hours it takes to get the applications out and get the agents paid. But that will be our operating hours. Okay, perfect. Um, now, Again, I think uh, Tegre was alluding to this, and I want to now delve a little bit more into talking about the state refilings. So, um, Tegre, if you want to go ahead and kind of lead off on this and talking about it, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the screen for everybody so that they okay. can actually see the map, and, and that way we can start talking about it from there. Sound good? Yes. Absolutely. So, let so, me do that. That's not the map. <laughs> there it is. There, there we it go. Is. Yep. So 
What's, uh, what's interesting about the map is, you know, you can see we have a lot of areas that we've covered in the last four years. And so the, the states in yellow being the ones that we don't have a product, there's not a certificate of authority um, or something with the state has prevented us from being in that state. But for the most part, we are pretty much everywhere. The states in the light blue are the states that we've gone in uh, we've worked with uh, IAC, with the reinsurance company, to determine where we could take reductions on our rate. So there's two points I want to make on this. Number one, um, we also we have the household discount in almost every one of our states. Now, there's different uh, rules depending on what state. There are some states that require two people to apply. But as I look at the list of states that we have refiled, um, only two that I can see on that map make two people apply. And I believe that's Ohio and, and New Jersey. Um, everywhere else that I can see, Michigan, Virginia, Alabama, Mississippi, New Mexico, Nebraska, Iowa, um, you just have to have another adult living with you in order to apply for the discount. Now, really, we all, as agents, we're all aware almost every carrier has a household discount. It's 7% um, applied. Uh, if you have another adult living with you in the home. And so what, what that means is when you're quoting on the, on the CSG quoting tool or any other quoting tool, uh, I see a base rate, but sometimes you forget to click the, the apply discount. Um, if they are in that situation, the additional 7% will come off the rate. So what we looked at, we worked with AC was where is the market going right now? Where is the business going right now? We all know that there's a fair amount a ton of Plan F business out there. Um, it's sort of trended to be not as competitive for carriers, um, you know, just in the last two or three years, where the market seems to be in a sweet spot is on Plan G. So we looked at Plan G, Plan G rates in all those states in the light blue. So if you're running a quote, you're going to want to run a quote probably between 67 and 77. I call that a sweet spot on underwritten business because that's really what we're targeting. We're targeting um, underwritten business or, or a good mix of business because we're going to get under our open enrollment business. I mean, you'll get all, all kinds of business, but, but we're focused on a good mix of business and that includes a, a healthy amount of underwritten business. That helps us with the rate increases. It helps us have longevity in the market. So the states in light blue, all of have been reduced on plan G and I think where you'll see the sweet spot when you're running a quote male or female is like 67 68 up to like 77 where you're gonna notice is it's really competitive on plan G uh, the opportunity is there for AEP to en enroll it to get have great customer service with their staff um, it, it enrolled quickly for for you know AEP because we all know that your time is limited during AEP we don't have a lot of time to follow up and take care of issues. So we need solid staff that can help us do that. Um, so we're kind of meeting everything. We've got the rates in, in these new states. Uh, we've got a solid uh, platform. We've got a great e-app. We have the customer service. We're ready. Our hours of operation, 24-7, um, right, Cheryl? Just sure. Kidding. Give them my cell number. Yeah, I got it. I'm not going to mess anyone up. 8 to 6 Central. Um, so I think uh, if you run a quote, um, apply the discount, you'll see our Plan G rates look really good in these states. It's a great opportunity um, and a great value for your clients. So let me, can I ask a couple of uh, questions for clarification? Um, number one, so the light blue states, was IEC already there or are those new states that IEC is going into? They were already there. Um, so they're just states that were identified by the actuary staff that, that we work with, uh, Third party query um, that we work with that we could actually take a decrease in. So we looked at those states. What are the value for MedSubs? So if you look at states like Nebraska, Iowa, Mississippi, Virginia, um, Michigan, great MedSub states. Those are states where you have a lot of uh, beneficiaries that select Medicare supplement plans. So, um, you know, we needed states where we can go get a good mix of business and, and that we maybe have not had the, the high track record of sales in. So we identified, I think it was 11, right? You corrected me on the phone yesterday. We have 11 well, that we can, <laughs> that, that we have the opportunity in. Um, so um, it's as simple as running a quote. It's on all of the, the quotes 
The other thing that I think we're really good at is contracting as well. So we have a full team here at Heartland that helps and assists with the contracting. It is electronic. Um, and, you know, we work hand, hand in glove with uh, staff at IAC to process contracts quickly because it's the first step you take. It's your first introduction into the company. Or one of the first introductions to a company is how fast can I process my contract? How fast can they get me, you know, approved? So, um, you know, we're going to test that because I've got three eight to contract, Cheryl. So we're going to going to actually put our own theories to test because of the limited window before it starts. Yeah, and uh, I, I mean, even when we when we contracted a while ago, it was it was fast, and that's again always appreciated to, to have that done in such a quick manner. You know, one other question of clarification that I want to make here is with these um, the rate decreases. Just to clarify, okay, I know the answer, but I want to hear from you guys. We are, these rate decreases are actually decreases on the individual assurance company product. This is not a subsidiary that you're bringing out to reduce rates. It is the, you're reducing rates on the existing plan, right? On the existing plan. Okay. Awesome. That's cool. So it's not the same in every state. So there are states where, you know, the decrease might be a little bit more significant than in other states. Our goal was to get it in the top tier of, of rates, um, you know, be at the top five or the top three in that state. I think you'll see IC um, places very well. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, I just the only I wanted to reiterate that point because it's always good for agents to know that it's not always going to be a case where every year after year rate increases happen across the board for med subs. There's going to be times where uh, no loss ratios, like they said, at, actuaries are able to look at certain states and determine we can actually reduce rates so that we can um, have a better offering in those areas. Yes. And I want to point out one other thing. Just because we're talking about the light blue states, the 11 states that we decreased, doesn't mean that we're not competitive in the dark blue states. So there's many states in the dark blue where the value is still there. When you look at it, IEC is placed well in a lot of states still because we haven't taken huge increases over the past four years. There are some states, yes, that, you know, some birthday rule states that we've gone a little bit higher in, but when you look at states where we don't have like a birthday rule or anniversary rule, the value is still there. It's still placing very well in it and you'll see it show up. So, um, you know, Cheryl, you can speak to this. You get, you get applications from plenty of the, the dark blue states right now. Um, oh, not, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I looked at applications this week and, I, and we got them from all over the place. So Illinois, South Dakota, Colorado, um, California, Oregon. I even saw one from Texas or a couple from Texas. Yeah, and I didn't look at everything. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's a, a great point that needs to be made is that for everyone watching that just because, you know, we're, we're, we're obviously highlighting the blue state reduction, the light blue ones, the, the dark blue ones are still a very competitive product and some that you're going to see on CSG anyways. So just know that, uh, you know, this is a, a great company. It's a great company that has the backing of a, a great team at IEC, a great team at Heartland Financial Group. It's something that I think agents should really, um, you know, if you haven't yet, Give it a shot. Try writing it. See that. See for yourself. You know, I have had nothing but great experiences with writing this business. I know other, plenty of other agents in the industry that have had great experiences. And uh, you know, and if you guys don't have the contract yet, and you're on the on the university, um, all you got to do is click the. There's going to be at the top a contracting button, and on there you can um, fill out your your basic information. Select IAC as the as the contract you want requested, and and we'll get it to you within 24 hours or less. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. You know, if you don't have a contract, it's easy to get one. And then the process of getting appointed is still a very fast process, especially in comparison to some other carriers that I've seen in the market. So um, um, you guys, you guys have anything else you want to add? I do. Um, I'm never uh, at a shortage of things I want to add. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to ask Cheryl this headed into okay. AEP this year. Um, and, and because you are in the trenches with your team, uh, work issues, taking care of clients, getting claims paid, uh, when you deal with 
applications, paper applications, because we still accept paper. Um, of course. Where, where the, where the, probably the biggest holdup is, is on paper applications that get submitted because let's face it, we're not great at filling those out as agents. We're not, we leave stuff on, right? like we're in third grade. I'm not disparaging agents because I'm talking about myself. Okay. So I, uh, you know, you have to deal with that part of it. What's the one thing that agents can do to help improve their experience at the home office? Because what I notice in my position is that I get a story from an agent and then call the insurance company and I, and I unload on the insurance company, the issues that, that were just presented to me. And then I find out in, in, you know, a lot of cases, not every case, but in a lot of cases that there was something that the agent could have done to prevent this whole backlash of issues that happened. Um, and so it's very important to keep an open mind and to, you know, work with the company to try to help your client ultimately get your business issued on time. So what is the thing that you see the most, Cheryl, that agents do that hold up their applications? Okay, so obviously open enrollment applications take the least amount of time as long as we have all the pertinent information. Uh, underwriting applications take longer, but we're still trying to do those. Like our, our goal is to have everything done even when we have to reach out to the agent within 48 hours. The biggest holdup is on un underwritten applications. We order a prescription drug check on every underwritten application. If the medication on the application it does not match the medication on the script check, we require an interview between the applicant and the, and the underwriter. So, you know, I know it might take a few extra minutes, but it's, you know, have your customer go in and get their prescriptions and write them down for them because it's, that is just, it's such a timely thing and it just breaks our heart, hearts every time we see that happen. So quick question on that because um, most of the applications when it comes to prescriptions, you're asking for a history of the, the, the past 12 months that they took prescriptions. 24 um, months. 24 months. So, yes. so, even, so I guess, but, but what will happen sometimes is a client will forget something that they took you know, if they took amoxicillin because they had, they had some kind of infection and they took it, I don't know, 20 months ago, they completely forgot about it. But does that go onto the prescription record? And does that cause, you know, if they forget to add it, is that going to cause an interview to happen? It, it does go on the prescription record most times. And we look at that, Eric, and for something like that, we wouldn't do an interview. It would be, you know, perhaps a blood pressure medication or insulin or, or something, but so, you know, maybe they had an eye infection. Well, we're not, you know, we're not going to hold that against them. So it's some of the more severe medications. And I think what happens is maybe they took something for a while and stopped and then starting and started a new medication. That's that, that when they're significant, we have to stop and do the interview. That makes sense. That makes sense. So that's good to know, though, because I don't. I, a lot of agents will, will take it literally and say, "Well, I, they can't remember every single one, and what's going to happen?" And you're going to cause all these. So just just be aware. That's what we wanted to make this point that it's the major medications, which most Correct. clients will remember the major medications they took for major conditions, and and right. that way you guys can add them. But any of the small stuff, aspirins and stuff like that, like that's yeah. Stuff you don't have yeah. to worry about. Moxicillin that they took, you know, because of an infection or whatever a couple years ago. Were there, were there B12? We're not worried about that. Yeah. It's just, yeah, the major the major meds need to match up because, again, insurance companies are looking to, to make sure that there's no, um, I guess, that there's no, there's no condition that they're trying to hide from us. You know, and that's really the medications are always a great indication of really the health condition of a consumer. So, um, yeah, just wanted to make sure we made that point clear. Well, thank you. That's exactly right. That's great. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for, for clearing that up. Hey, uh, Ted Gray, before we go on, before we go on, can I say two things? Yes. First of all, thank you for all your hard work. We really appreciate it. And for any agent, we want more apps. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's segue then well, to, we right. have a, uh, we have a, um, I got a brochure about that, right? So let me put that up on the screen. Okay. Give me one quick second. All right, so share screen. We, have a, we want more apps brochure. Close enough. Close enough, right? Right. We see that. 
puts it in front of yeah. me as well. So we have a, like a lot of, of uh, carriers out there, uh, us not, not excluded from that mix. Um, we are running a, a, actually a bonus incentive for AEP till the end of the year. And basically it's a hundred dollars per underwritten applications. Uh, you got to write a minimum of five per month to qualify. So we're going to look at it, uh, you know, in November for October and December for uh, November. And uh, we will pay that bonus out to you. And uh, actually in, in uh, December, we'll try to get it out early so that people have money for the holidays. Um, Need that Christmas money. Yes. And, and also don't forget that IEC applications count uh, underwritten and open enrollment count toward our trip next year. Uh, the contest ends December 31st, but uh, we started it July 1st and it runs till uh, December 31st. 60 applications gets you and a guest on our trip in Costa Rica, which is an awesome uh, place. I've never been to it, but Eric has, and he can vouch how awesome it is. We picked a really cool place, though. I think we picked uh, the West End, which has a great reputation. Um, the resort that we're at has something like nine or ten restaurants, a bunch of bars, and the largest pool in South America, I heard. Right, Eric? That's it, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's an awesome place, guys. I really, I think that, yeah, write some IEC business, get it, get, get yourself there because Costa Rica is an awesome location and it, uh, man, my wife and I love that place. We loved it so much that we were like, man, it'd be nice to just have a place. I didn't mean that it was just, it was awesome. I just, I recommend you guys work your tails off and get there, write some IEC. Man, the qualification is not a far reach either. So it's, uh, I think Heartland is being very generous with their qualifications. I think you guys just got to hustle and get there. So I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to get back to here. Um, so with that, then I guess we, we've covered, we've covered a lot of great topics today and it was a pleasure having both of you on here as always. Um, you know, I, I really look forward to seeing some big things in I, in AEP and beyond with IAC. So, um, Cheryl, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to come on here. Tegre, thank you so much for your time. Uh, guys, if, unless you have anything else to add. I know Tegre does, but I, <laughs> maybe Tegre's going to need to send out a memo or something, man. <laughs> no, but Cheryl, thank you and your staff. Please pass that on to them. We really appreciate their hard work, and uh, our aim is to keep them busy during AEP. Yeah, absolutely. And if you need the IEC contract, you know where to find it. We'll get you guys the contract sent out right away so that you can get appointed and ready to write business. All right. So guys, thanks again. And we'll see everybody on the next video. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Eric.